Okay. Um, let's move over to comparison. Comparison operators are used in logical statements to determine equality or difference between variables or values. So let's see some examples of these comparison operators. So this equal to equal to, it's used to check equality. And this equal to equal to doesn't look at the data type. Let me briefly show an example of that. Let me just set it up so it to be side by side. Okay. So now let's compare this first example one equal to 10. It should be false because one is not actually equal to 10. So it's false. If we were to give under example like maybe two equal to equal to two is true because two is equal to two. But one thing about using this equal to equal to sign like this is that it doesn't really check the type. So if we use two and we compare it against a string two, it will still evaluate to be true. But that's why they made another comparison operator, the triple equal to sign. This triple report doesn't only check the the it doesn't only check the it sorry it also checks the type. So in our example where we say two report to equal to it will be false. The reason is that it checks also the data type. It's like two is an integer. Meanwhile, this one, this two here is a string. So triple equal to, equal to checks the data type, but this double equal to just compares the value. It's like two, two, so they're equal. It's like one, 10, okay, it's not equal. But triple equal to checks the value and then the types as well. Then the next one we have here is not equal to. So one, not equal to two. That is true because one isn't equal to two. So let's check an example. Let's say one not equal to two. It's true because one is not equal to two. Let's use, let's say five not equal to five. This is false because five is equal to five. And just like before, we have another operator that checks for type. Okay. Let me. Oh, first of all, like, okay. Um, it's not actually going to be true because like, for instance, now the data type doesn't match as well as the value. So just know that this not equal to, with undies triple to checks also not just, it compares not just the value, but also the data type. For instance, now one, even though we use the triple report, it's still not going to be false because one is not equal to five. When we use the, ball, the double report to here, it just checks the data type also as well as we showed here. This one evaluated to be true. But over here, it's false because of which we are checking inclusively, like we're also checking the data type, also, not just the values. Um, we have some others like greater than, our example here is five greater than three. That should be true because five, is greater than three. If we try and the example, maybe let's say one greater than 10. That is false because one is not actually greater than 10. Then we have our less than. 
we have our less than operator. This one checks for less for values less than something. Okay, let's say 40. This should actually be false. Yeah. So 40, we are comparing 40 and this one. They are saying like 40 is less. We are saying, sorry, yeah, 40 is less than 10. But that's false. Like two is actually less than 10. That's true. So now we can check for greater than and less than with these two operators. This, this sign is for greater than. This one is for less than. So we have some more operators. Now, what if we want to compare for whether a value is maybe greater than or equal to? You can use this one here. But let me give you an example first. Let's assume um, we, we do something like this. Or I'll, maybe when we go into a for loop, I will show you a better example. But just for instance, now let's okay. Let me just try it here. Let's say five greater than five. Five is not actually greater than five because five is equal to five. But with this greater than operator here, we can like check for conditions like this. So it can be like five greater than or equal to five, and it will be. And it to be true because five is equal to five, and it's uh, and like because this condition is true because five is equal to five. But note this condition, this um operator checks for whether it is equal to and greater than. So anyone that is true, anyone that happens, it will record. Let's assume now five greater than or equal to six. This is still true because six is greater than five. If in this case here. Five is equal to five, so it's true. In this case, six is greater than five, so it's true. And we have the less than or equal to. It's just like the opposite. It can be like four less than or equal to four. It's true. It can be like um, let's say maybe two less than or equal to let's say six. That should be true because two is less than six. In this case, four is equal to four. So the next step would be, let's go into um, logical operators. Like basically, um, when we have two, two, like when our maybe comparison or something returns two and two, it's evaluated as two. Um, when when we have a two and a false statement, it's evaluated as false. Then when we have a false and a false, it's also a false. Here's like a basic example. We check five greater than one. Five greater than one is two. Then we check and two equal to two. This is also true. So it should return true. Um, let me also show you a basic example of this. Okay, like we can be like two and two. And it return two. We can try maybe let's say false and false. It returned false. Okay. Um Yeah, we can also try com some comparisons here. Let's say, maybe, let's say one, or two, let's say one. Then I want to check and maybe two, equal to maybe two. It returns true because one and one is, th is true, then two and two is true. This is this basically is what is basically doing is something like this one equal to one. 
Then it's like, oh, this is true. Then it checks two equal to two. Then it's like also true. So just like I said before over here, whenever you have true and true, it's going to be true. When you have true and false, it's going to be false. When you have false and false, it's also going to be false. So let's give another example. Let's say we have maybe one equal to, let's say five. And maybe let's say five equal to, let's say four. It's going to be four. Oh, okay. I made an error. Okay. It's going to be false. Um, yeah. Going to be false. So, this so you can see it. So now let's go to the next one. We have this this operator here, this double five or it's used as a or operator. So it's just like a real life. This or this. So if true or true, it returns true. If true or false, it returns true. It only returns false when it's false or false. So when the two statements evaluate to, when maybe two conditions or two comparisons maybe evaluate to false, it returns false. We can, let me just clear my screen first. Okay. So let's say we have two or two. It return true. We have true or false. It will return true. It's, it's also the same thing if you try false or true. It's going to return true. It only returns false when we compare false or false. So it's going to be false. We can maybe let's use some comparison to. Check it, let's see how it's going to work. Okay, we can be like maybe let's say um five, let's say equal to three. Five is naturally equal to three. Then we can be like or which is this this is or this is just like saying or let's say maybe six equal to or let's say six is um greater than five, which is true. Then it returned to. So this is basically like five equals to three, which is false. Then maybe six greater than five, which is true. So it adds these two, it's like false or false. What is it? It's right here. False or true, sorry. It's right here. False or true is going to return to. So that's basically what this line is doing. It's checking these two things over here. It's like, Five equal to is like five equal to three. That's false. Or six greater than five. Okay, six greater than five. That's true. So that's why it returned true. We can also try maybe another example. Let's say um, one equal to ten. That is not true. Or maybe six equal to seven. That is not true. So false, this first um, statement here is false, or checks whether the second one is also false and it's false, so it's going to return false. So here, false and false is going to be false. The next one is the not operator. This is like, it's just like picking the opposites of anything. If something is true, when you apply this not, I don't know whether you can see it, but it's here. When you apply this not, it makes it false. If something is false, when you apply it, it makes it true. You can maybe see some example here. Let's say we have, or uh, can just do it. You have to put this not. This this is the this is the symbol you have to use. When you say not true, it just it's just like real life. When you say something is not true, it becomes false. When you say something is not false, it becomes true. So we can be like one equal to 10. One equal to 10 is false. But 
when we use the not, that becomes two. So we are trying to say, this is not what it original is, what it is meant to be like. One equal to 10 is not true, it's false. But once we add a not, it changes it and makes it true. So it just takes the opposite of anything. Um, the next thing we'll be doing today, you know? Okay, the next thing we'll be doing today is conditional statements. So now, um, very often, let me just read out what is here. Very often, we write code. You want to perform different actions for different decisions. So the first one we take today is the if, the if statement. And before I continue, um, I created a GitHub for most of these projects. After the after everything, like we'll switch to this place and write most of the code on if and the rest. We'll write it in here. I have some basic, um, some basics like I have the basic syntax for most of all this other stuff like if else if and stuff so after this class i will like push it to github so you guys can check it out i have also a readme file here with some links to basic stuff you guys can check out and like this one you can read more about if here logical operators booleans you can hear the code on github i don't know should i put it here or maybe later so this is like the github I might paste it together So now, the if statement, in this example I gave here, we want to do, we want to assign the this variable greater to be equal to good day. If five, if um, yeah, five is less than 18. So let's write some code. So like here again, this is the basic syntax for an if statement. The condition goes here, and then the block of code that will be executed goes in between for any place in bracket. So if this condition is true, this code will execute one inside here. If it's not true, then the program just continues. So now our first thing, let's say if, let's say um, if five, is greater than, let's say, two. We want to console.log. Console.log by just printing it out to the screen. And let's say, let's just say five. We save our file. So um, I think I'll just run it with my command prompt here. Okay. So to run it, I have node installed. That's why I can actually do it like this. So the file is called learn.js. So it's printed five is greater because our condition here is true. If this condition is not true, it won't work. Okay, let's now change this to, to something like 200. Five, if five is greater than 200, console.log five is greater. Save our file. We open our command prompt. We run the code. Nothing gets printed because five is not greater. So nothing gets printed. But now we have, we have learned a little about if. But what if we want to do something if this condition here is false? That's why they made the next one, the else. Together with the if and else, you can like do something. If this is true, you can do this one. Else, you can try out this one. Let me just show you the syntax for it. So here it is. This is it. So if this condition is true, 
we will do this block. We'll do the code inside here. We'll run the code here. Else, we'll now do this one here. So going back to our example, um, let me just comment out this line. I just want it to be here so you guys can check it out. But let's be like, this is like our if statement. So now let's be like, um, if else. I just want to write it out so in case you guys want to check it. If you want to check it, just remove these comments. So just remove the comments remove the comments and you can always run the code for yourself. But for now, I just want to comment it out. Each time you comment code out, it means you're telling the that thing to our compiler to not execute that code. So this part will not be executed. So now our basic syntax for if else, we can maybe use the same example as before, let's say five, let's say, Greater than two. Let's just start with something like this. Then we also got log. Let's say, let's say this time, let's um, let's say five is bigger. Then if this is not true, I remember the syntax. If we do this part, if it's true, this condition, if this condition is true, the code inside here will happen. Then else, else, this part will happen. The code inside here will be executed inside this block. This one here. Yeah, executed. So else, this be like um, console.log. Console.log, we're just printing stuff out. This be like five is smaller. So now five is actually greater than two. So five is actually greater than two here. If I go into here to run the code, the if block works because five is greater than two. Five is greater. So now if you change this part here to something like 200 now, five is no longer greater than 200. You can't compare five to 200 in any way. Five is actually less than 200. So this part is false. Five is not greater than 200. If I run the code, they are saying here now five is smaller. So now, whenever this if is false, else this block of code else we run. I'll still show you guys more examples, but for now, let's just try maybe using some kind of variable or something. And um, let's say we have a variable. Um, I just want to show you guys the function. Let's say we have a variable called h, and h is equal to, let's say, um, let's just say that. Like, I just want to show you guys using a variable. Let's say we now have something like year, and year is equal to 2023. So now let's assume I'm like h. Let's say h greater than year. We all know that this is not true. Then let's be like, um, okay, let's be like here. Then let's be like here. Here yeah, is greater. So now we can, it's just basically the same thing, but we are using. Minutes. It's basically the same thing, but we are using variables here. Age is equal to 10 and T year is equal to 2023. So we are comparing is 10 greater than 2023, or less, not 2023 actually, 2023. It's not. So you run the code, year is greater. And this is just like a basic example with a variable. We are comparing H, which is 10, to 2023, which is H is naturally greater than that. That's why the else block gets is Well, like this is not the only keywords we have. We can like compare in between the line. Let's assume. Let me go to that slide. Okay, something like this. This is 
the else if statement. Like, oh, I made a little mistake there. Yeah, I should have added everything up here. But anyway, um, we check the if statement, if it's true. Let me just show you the syntax. This is the syntax. This is the else if statement right here in between. So the if statement we check, this is the first condition. If this is true, this block of code will be executed. Then if this is not true, it goes to the next line, which is this else if. Then it checks, it checks the condition here. If this condition is true, then this block will be executed. But in a case where it checks the if statements and else if, and by the way, there can be many else if statements. It's, it's not just limited to one. I'll still show you guys an example. So if it checks all the if statements, if it checks the if statements and all the else if statements, and none of them are true before else will be executed. If not, to execute any of them next to. So this it's an example. Um let's be like if else and Okay, we can check if um, it just be like if one is is equal to ten, that is not true. One is not equal to ten. Then we can be like console dot log. We're just printing our stuff. This time I want to be a little bit more explicit. Let's be like um, I just want you guys to know the one that actually went like one equal to ten. It just be like this. So. Let's look at syntax again. The first line is the first one is if after if take the else if, if then after that the else so else if so this time this compare something this is like five four two five and it can be like also. So else, that's the first sentence. So the last part is the else, else. Yeah. So it can be like else, then we console, that's called. Okay, so let's just console.log, um, let's be like, None is true. So now let's run our code and see what will happen. So remember, if you want to run any of this code, maybe when you check the GitHub, you just uncomment all this, all these things. And here, yeah, examples is where I put the syntax. Then what we did to this inside this len.js file inside this folder, conditional statements and logical operator. You can also check the readme file and see some useful links to be on GitHub after this session. Save the file, let's run it. It says five is equal to five because here five is actually equal to five. If you look at it. One is not equal to ten, so it goes to the next condition. Five is equal to five. So now we can, let's change this five to maybe 50. We can also add another statement here. Let's take this to a new line. We can add another statement like else if, it's be like maybe six is greater than two. Six is actually greater than two, so we are right. So now this concept of log six greater. So we don't put six is greater than two. 
Notice we have two else if statements. The first one is not two. So it moved to the second condition, which is here. So this one is true because six is greater than two. So it's constant or not our output. We can also maybe make this one to also be false. Let's say six greater than 200. Six is not greater than 200. So else block is what we expect it to be executed. So let's test it. So none is true as else got executed. Note, else will only be executed when it goes through all the conditions and it sees none of them are true, then else will now be executed. But if one of them is true, it's going to be executed. So to be like, if this is what it is, it may be returned false. It goes here, it's like, this is what it is, it returns false. It goes here, it's like, this is greater than 200, it returns false, then else will be executed. Assuming any of them were true, else will be executed. Um, one other thing is, if I go, I don't know, let me just show you a basic example. We can actually kind of embed this stuff. We can use an if statement in another if statement. It's not originally, it's not originally supposed to be part of this stuff, share, but I just thought of adding it now. So let's be like, uh, Want to add a let's say if let's okay let's be like let's see let's see like um and that if let's just do and that if um, okay so first thing I want to check now is Let's see the basic syntax for if statements, just like before, the condition, then the code here. Else statements, here's the syntax, if else. No, you cannot, you cannot just have a else statement without having an if statement first to, to give you an error. So you have to always have else when you have an if. So now we can be like, um, let's say if, Maybe one is equal to one. Then we can have an that if maybe something like two is equal to two. Then maybe we can do something, but maybe like also dot log. Maybe one is equal to one and two is equal to two. So now we have our Kind of parent if statement here, and we have it and that if inside it. And note this parent if once it is executed, before this one inside can work. So let's just run our code now and check. So one equal one and two equal two. So if something happened, maybe like this one is equal to ten. This outside this parent if statement. This one outside. If it's equal to ten, which is not true. Then the one inside which you won't run at all, like it won't bother on it. So same thing. If this one inside is not correct, the correct one will run. Let me just show you an example. Let's say also dot log. So if this part runs, to console the log one equal to one. And after that, you check this condition inside it and see if it's true. So let's run the code. It's printed one equal to one because the parent block or the parent, should I say the parent if statement, just call it parent one, is the one, the if statement wrapping this child if, like it's actually run, it's true, one equal to one. So this block of code run. Then when it came to this if statement, it's not true, so it didn't run this code. But let's make it true. So I just just look at this. Two is equal to two. So, so yeah, one equal to one. And then you run the second one. One equal to one, two equal to two. Let me just clear my screen. Um Mm -hmm. 
maybe about 10 or two. Okay, yeah. Um, we have another one called switch statement. Sometimes we might have a code like that has, okay, let me go. Switch. Sometimes we might have maybe a code where we just want to compare various like kind of stuff together. Like, look at this um, syntax for if. Let's say we want to compare a lot of things. Let's say we want to compare maybe, um, let's say a number, let's say 10, we want to compare it against, want, like we, let's say we, are, we have a condition and we are supposed to compare a number if it's equal to one, we do something, if it's equal to two, we do something, if it's equal to three, we do something. Using this uh, syntax here, it will be kind of like, will, it will kind of like end up writing so, so much code. So sometimes it's a good idea to use the switch case in some cases, maybe you have, some kind of code that you, you just have to check different different conditions. Sometimes it's cleaner when we use the switch. So the switch takes like the expression, maybe it could be a number or whatever. Then it compares it against the first case, if it's true, the code here will be executed. Second case, if it's true, it will be executed. This break statement, if you don't put it, it will execute the first case. It will keep on checking any case that is to, to execute it. I'll, let's just sh show an example. Yeah. Switch. Like switch. Let's say, oh, let me do like, let me create a variable here. Let's do like number to the say. So, uh, let me just say two. So now, passing the number. Let's check our the syntax for switch again. Yeah, we have the switch statement. It's wrapped in curly brackets. Then we have each case, each case here. Yeah. So in the first case, we want to check if the number is, let's say, uh, one. If it's one, we might maybe console.log. It's one. Then we have to break so it ends. I'll still show you an example where we don't break what happens. We might have case two. It's two. Then we break. Well, let's let the code. So it's two. So like this is the number, it's two. Checks the first case, is it one? Checks it's not one. Second case, is it two? Yeah, it's two. Um now okay, wait, let's let me yeah, I'm trying to give you an example. Let's assume just let's assume this this first one is also two and the second one is two. Note here I wrote is one, so the output we are, we are expecting is one. Here is two, here is two. Let's just give an example. So it said it's one. It broke because of this break statement. If I comment out this break statement, and let's also comment this one out, it will check the first condition. If it's true, it will continue. To check the second one, if it's true, to continue because we didn't we removed this break. So it's it is saying it is one, it is two. It checked the first case. The first case is saying it two. Then it print cancelled out this thing, printed it out. Then because there is no break statement, it continued. It checks the second one, it's still two. It prints out this thing. So now some cases you might have a case where, like you may have a switch where in your case, none of them satisfies 
the condition. That's why we have the default. Yeah, look at it here, the default. In a, in a situation where none of the case happens, the default will happen. So let's add back our break. So to break each line. So now we can add our default. Uh, console.log and no case for this expression. Uh, let's say for this number. Let's just say no case for this number. So now the default won't be executed because, uh, let me change this back to one. The default will be executed because there's a case that happened. This case happened. Well, let's assume this number was something like, let's say, 100. There is no case for 100. So we did, there's no case where we check. We didn't check in any case of 100. So the default will happen. So it's like no case for this number because the switch case checked all, all the cases. It checked this first case. It's not 100, it takes the second case, it's not 100. So the default case will have to happen. And uh, yeah, here's the slides for it, the default. So um, yeah, I, I would like to paste the link to the GitHub. So after the class, you guys can check it out. I'll paste it now. But if there is any question, you can always ask me now. I've, I just sent the link. So now you can always go and check it out. And is there any question? Um, sorry, I don't even know how to speak. Hello, yeah. Hello, good evening. So my question is just about this switch statement. Like, can you please just go over it again because it's really, really confusing right now. You said just switch. If switch statement, yes, please. If, if statement. No, switch, switch, switch. Do I just okay. switch? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, let me just go over it. Thank you. Like, okay, let's do it again. Like, it's, let me just give a shot. This time, let's use a string. Let's say we have a string called, um, like a string for the days of the week. Let's say this is day. So let's say the first one is, let's say Sunday. So now we can have a case and just comment. We can have a case where we check. Okay, we have to also pass this. Remember, you have to always pass the variable here that like you're checking for. This is just like it switches case, like it checks the case, then if it is it, something happens. So. Like we have a variable for the day of the week, let's say Sunday. Today is not actually Sunday, but let's say Sunday. So we check a case here. Let's say we first and check um, Monday. So if this case, if the day of the week, which is this variable Sunday, this value, this variable is holding the value Sunday. If it's actually Monday, it should just be like maybe let's let's do something. Let's be like um. I love maybe Monday or something. So now let's just let me I think let me just remove this part.
So now, the day of the week in this example here is not actually Sunday. It's Sunday, but this case is checking whether it's Monday. So like this case is not going to be executed because the day of the week is not correct. So if notice here, nothing gets executed. Nothing is printed out. Like there's nothing here. So now this is just we're checking for only one single case Monday. So now let's add another case. I don't want to write all the days of the week. So let's just be like in the second case now is checking for let's say Sunday. The console.log maybe um I maybe go to church. Yeah, let's also break. So, uh, like, notice the day of the week, this variable here is equal to Sunday. So, what this code will do this week is check the day of the week. Okay, it knows it's Sunday. So, it will check the first case. Is this first case Sunday? No, it will be like, oh, it's Monday. So, it won't even bother executing the code inside here. To go to the next case, it's like, is this case Sunday? Yeah, this case is Sunday. So it would be like I go to church. That's what most people do. So now let's um, execute the code. So it's like I go to church. The reason why it said I go to church is because this case, this Sunday, matches the value up here. Like if you notice this Sunday here, this case of Sunday is the case here. If I change the case to Monday, what will happen is this first one, this first case here will be executed because Monday, this is the case Monday. It matches the actual thing we are looking for, which is Monday. So I love Monday. We can just, instead of creating a variable, we can just maybe, let's just, let's just use it to count a variable. I love Monday, it's still the same thing. I just use the variable just because it's what you'll be using most of the time. So created a variable there of the week, Monday. Then the first case checks, is it Monday? If it's Monday, it should be like I love Monday. But let's assume um, we don't have a case here that's like for a specific day or for some days. So we can have like the default. The default will only happen when it checks all the cases and it's like none of them are two, none of them are Monday or whatever that's up here. In this case, Monday. So to be like this, be like um, no match or something, because they are just comparing the value here, the value here, and the value up here, like in this variable. Here. So in this case, the default would be executed though, because the day is Monday, and we have a case here called Monday. But let's say we try um, Friday. Notice here, we don't have any case for Friday. We have a case for Monday, which is here. We have a case for Sunday, which is here. But this default we have because we don't have any Friday case here. There's no Friday. So it's like not much because we don't have any. I just cleared my screen. Let me do it again. It's like not much because none of them match. None of the cases match. But if we add a Friday case, it should work. Let me just add it. Um, let's be like a happy day. Yeah, let's break it. If we don't break, the code won't end. If you don't break it, we just keep on going. That's why we use this break to stop it once it gets a case that match. So a happy day, Friday. And did you understand? Is there any other question?
Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I want to ask something. Still on this thing, if you now change the days of the week to, let me say, take for instance to Tuesday, but you, um, there's no default, that default also does not not match. Like, if I don't even put it there, what will now display? Like, what will display? Okay, not no, display. Nothing will display, yeah. Let's assume okay. uh, this is Tuesday. Nothing will display. Okay, nothing, nothing will happen. What it will just do is, like, I don't know whether I saw it. I, it's not, nothing happened. So it will check, okay. it will check Tuesday, check, it will check this first case, be like Monday, no. To check this case, be like Sunday, no. Check this case Friday, no. Then it will just continue with the program to go out of this switch. Okay, thank you. And um, any other questions? Uh, I want to ask. Okay. Um, this switch statement, I think it is kind of similar to if else statement. Uh, yeah, I don't yes. know if I'm right. It's similar to some if, uh, yeah, it's similar to if in a way, but somehow it's a little bit more convenient in some cases. Like you can, we can actually do the same thing with if else, yeah. Yes, exactly what I'm saying. Okay, or maybe I should actually, let me show you guys an example with if else. Oh, so let me just, I just want this thing to be, okay. Yeah, let me just show you guys an example. Okay. Manuel, are you done asking questions? Yeah. Are you done? Because I knew someone asking the question. Have you answered her question? Yeah, I've answered her. Someone else asked her the question now. Okay, okay, okay. I have yeah. no problem. So, like, I'm just trying to show you how you would maybe implement something like this with an if statement. So you can always go to the GitHub and check the code and check. So this is the if statement for the above code here. Okay. First thing is we have our variable here. Maybe I should just copy, copy it. Or should I leave it? Oh, just copy it over here. So there will be we. We can check the first thing we check is if is equal to a Monday. So we'll be like if day of the week. I just want to copy it. So check if the of the week is equal to support to a Monday. Then we can come. Let me just be copying them over. I don't want to type out everything. So we support to a Monday to do, do this. Then we be like else if. We can check the next condition, maybe. And that should be Sunday. Can be like a will be what Sunday. Then we can do this part. And for the next line, let me just copy this and I'll, I'll change the process. So the next line we're checking if it's Friday. So if day of the week is Friday, we can do this part. Like I hope you're seeing like how it's becoming a little bit kind of not very written. Then the last one we yeah, check the end. Yeah. yeah, that's why we normally use it this switch. So this should basically do the same thing. In this case, Tuesday, there's no condition that checks for Tuesday. So it goes to the else. First one checks for Monday. Oops, I don't know, give some space. Just give it this space. I don't let it. Okay, let me just leave it like this. I don't want to keep it like this. Let me just leave it. Just leave it. First one, day of the week, checks Monday. Second one, checks Tuesday. It checks Friday. Then if nothing is true, then it returns else. 
So Tuesday is what we set here. So let's run the code. So not match because none of them match what we're looking for. If we change it to something like um, let's say Friday, I change it to Friday. So a happy day is what we expect it to be printed out. So a happy day. Yeah, a happy day. I don't know why I asked your question. Yes, well answered. I was thinking so. Yeah. To okay. Yeah. Is there any other question from anybody? Yes, I, I dropped a message or a question on the chat. Box. My question is just like, how do we release all this with like real life applications? Like, I think if maybe when you are trying to explain all of this and you are relating it to what is obtainable on maybe a mobile app or a web page, maybe to make clear sense. That's just my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, for now, like with just each statement, you're not going to be able to just do something super cool, but let me just show you an example because you guys have not learned a few things like for loop functions. There's a lot of things that just go into this stuff. So let me just show you an example. Let's be like, um, check positive and negative numbers. So let's use our if statement. We want to check, okay, first thing, let's say we have a number. Let's say the number is just five. For now, it's all. So let's be like, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, sorry, for now, it's positive, sorry, because it's greater than zero. Yeah. So we check if number is greater than maybe zero. Or actually, let's say if it's greater than or equal to zero. It should be positive. So console.log and positive number. And we can as well maybe add the number here. Let's just be like, don't want to go too far, but let's just add it. Then else it can be like console.log. Then negative number. Then let's just add the number here so we can actually see the number. So when we run our code, it's like positive number. This compare. So this is the the and um, the like we, this is the string, the first part positive number. Then this is the number. So like with this basic stuff, you can just, is there any other question? So like, I don't, this is basically, a, it's not really a real world thing, but it's still possible that you might write code that you want to check if something is this or that. For now, you can't actually start building anything very serious without going a little bit further. If you still get that, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other question? Um, is there any other question? Hello? 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 Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, um, good evening. Sorry, I want you to uh, throw more light on the embedded if statement. And okay. um, I want to ask, is it only the if statement that is embeddable, you can actually put it that way, or you can embed other statements as well. Yeah, you can embed others as well. But I don't imagine embedding an, you can even embed maybe some kind of something like you can write a if statement, then if it's true, you can still add a switch statement inside of that if statement and all those kind of stuff. But let me just focus on showing you, let me just show you a basic example. Let's be like, um, you said I should just throw more light on the if, like show you another example on the if, right? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so let me be like, um, let's just, let me just be set, let me just declare if in if. Yeah. 
So, okay. Um, I don't know. Okay. Let me... Let's do something a little bit more cool. Let's have a number. Boss, I we think you check. Can check your battery or if you're hearing me, check your battery. Yeah, yeah, I, I checked it, I checked it. I checked it. It's, I still have some battery here. So, so, okay. Let's check if this number is um, positive or negative. If it is positive, let's check if it is even or odd. I think that's a good example. So, and before we do that, I just want to show you something first. So you understand what we're about. So now, when you use this, when you when you want to divide something, you can be like um, five. Let's say you can be like four divided two. It's two. But when you want to see the remainder of what happens after a division, you can use this modulus. So when uh, Two is dividing four. There is no remainder. It's zero. So for us to check an even number, an even number can be divided by two, right? So we we'll use something like this. I just wanted to show you. If you want to check the remainder of a division, you can use this modulo operator. Let me just do that. Okay. Let's be like if number is greater than or equal to zero, that means it's positive. Then we can have under if that checks if that same number. Then we use our modulo M2, which is we're checking the remainder. What we're checking like this, what this what this thing would do is to return to us the remainder. Four divided by two should return something like zero. Six divided by two should return zero. So each time it returns zero, we know that this is a positive number. But if you return something else, it's not positive. Well, let me just show you more examples. So let's so it can be like maybe five divide. Okay, that's not five. Five divide two. It has some points here. You noticed. So if we use the modulo, like divide two, you noticed remainder one. So, but if it were an even number, let's say six divide two, it will always return zero because an even number can be divided by zero. So we check this, we check the number divided by two. What it, if it's if it's remainder, what the remainder is if it's equal to zero, then we know it's a positive number. Then we can maybe console dot log. And let's say we have a let's say um it's just we have a even number I just i just want to keep it simple we check we check this condition if it's true if it's true which is if it's positive we now check we now check this condition then print this stuff out so in this case it's five five is not an even number so it's not going to work So if we run the code, nothing is printed out because five. Although this first part we evaluated two, but this second part went wrong because it's, it has its own condition. So if this were something like let's say 50, 50 is still an 50 is an even number. So if you run it, it should be like we have a even number. So now we use that if statement inside another if. And for this, if this one inside now to work, for it to run, for it to even have a chance to run, the one covering it must be two. So in a case where this one is not two, it won't even bother looking inside here. Like this, the whole code inside here, including this if will not run. So I don't know. Is there any other question? Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, so if I may get you well, you, you mean the second condition is dependent on the first one? Yes. In this the embedded. One, yeah, the one inside is depending on the one outside. Yeah. So if this one right. is false, it won't work. Yeah. 
All right, thank you. Um, any other question? My battery is kind of good, just in case. Um, any other question? Anything? I'm here. So just remember when you go to the GitHub, I pasted the link in the chat. Here you see the basic syntax. You get here's a readme file. We have the some I put some links to some basics and some pages you can read more about all this stuff, like who bears comparison and logical papers, if else, if uh, and the rest switch also. Any question? Sorry, please, where did you drop the link there? Let me just, let me get the link again. Um, so, like, I'm about to paste it. Okay, like, link. I have, I just pasted the link now. But the code is not actually there. So you, after this video, I'll make the code available, push the code there. Is there any other question? Like, if you have any question, I can just, you can ask. If you didn't understand how comparison works or you don't understand, I don't just ask. Is there any question? Okay, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good evening, sir. Now, please, I want to ask um, this last one that you did. The if inside the if that you did. Okay. The if number, the percentage I didn't get to my network address when you talked about the percentage. What's the work of that percentage? Okay. Um. Let's go back into our. Notes. Like I was like, if when you want to divide things, you know, like you can divide four by two, and yeah. four by four by two doesn't have any remainder because yeah. two can easily divide four. It's two, it goes in two times. Same thing with maybe something like ten. Ten divided by two, just five. Maybe you try something like nine divided by um, two. It's going to have some remainder. Yes, and here's same four point five. So now. If you want to get that remainder, you can use this modulo. So when we do, um, let's say, when we do 10, you can use this percent sign, let me just say it. You can use this percent sign. When you use this percent sign, it gives you the remainder. When we do four divided two and 10 divided two, it gave us five, there's no remainder. So 10 divided two, it's, it gives us zero because zero is the remainder. It does not say remains, you understand? So if you divide nine, by two, one remain because nine. You know, you know, two can divide eight. It will be four. Yes. Then it remains one. So that remainder is what it gives us. So now, when you want to check if a number is even or odd, you know, any number that can be divided by two is even. Then others are odd, like odd. Uh, others are odd. So that's the condition we're checking here. We're checking number divided by two. If what it returns is equal to zero, then we have an even number. But if you return something else like one, then it's not even because we know that anything divided by two must return zero as the remainder. It should not have any remainder. And do you understand or should I? No, I understand. I guess I guess it's done. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Um, is there any other person? Any question? And you can always check out the slide as well. It's the link. It's also in the GitHub. You can just go to the stuff that I think if it will help. I don't know. Um, if there is no question, I don't know. I don't think we will continue. I think we will have to end because my battery is also low. So if you have any question, you can ask. Hello. 
Hello. Yeah. Um, can you just give us a quick example, uh, adding an um, else statement into the last, the embedded if statement? Okay, adding like an else. Should I add it? You know, when we embed an if statement, we can actually have an that else here that checks if this thing is odd. Should I, should I add the else inside of the embedded if? Okay, like here now. Yes. Okay. Yes. It can be like console.log. And this be like we have odd number. So now this number is actually even, so it won't print out what it will print. It, the else would be executed. It said we have an even number because 50 is an even number. But if we try something like let's say let's say 19. 19 is an odd number. We can try nine, we can try seven, anything like let's just try seven. It said here we have an odd number. So we just embedded an if else statement, an if else statement inside this if. And this code here, this one won't be executed if this code here is not true. Okay. So for instance, for instance, now if this thing was something like let's say minus six, you won't even see anything on the screen. Let me just clear the screen. Okay. When I run the code, okay, that's what I want to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there another person with any other question? Anybody? Um, so I'm guessing you guys like understood most of what we did. Okay. Yeah. And Daniel, thanks for the thumbs up. Um, since I have, I still have a little bit. Of that, I think let me just talk a little bit more on the compare on the statistic comparison operator just to make sure because if you don't fully understand it, oh, do you have a question? Hello. <laughs> Hello, were you saying something? No, like, do you have a question? Is there? Okay, I I don't know if there are any questions at remaining because no one's hand is raised. I didn't hear you. I said I don't think anyone has any question remaining because no one's hand is raised. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. So sh we should end. I'm guessing. Does it? Well, he said sorry. I didn't hear you. I'm guessing we should end now. We should call it a day. The day. It's almost time, so Seth. It's like seven minutes to ten. Seven minutes to ten. Why is why is someone why is someone saying um a task goes strong? Don't worry, the task is not going to be something that you have not done already. But yeah. what the task is going to do is going to test your creativity and how you solve problems. Because it's not just about learning a programming language, programming language or what the programming language is. You also know how to use the programming language to solve problems. Now, all of us being software engineers, what is the main goal of our work is that we use our work to solve problems, to bring solutions to things you get. So the task is not going to be something that you cannot do. It's going to be hard, maybe, depending on the person, but it's going to help you in critical thinking. So we'll be expecting the task, or you'll be expecting the task by Monday. So what I'm just trying to say is that whatever you are doing, now you have attended this class, please, please, and please, don't just go back home and do what you are doing. Try to practice, try to use what you have learned from this class and test your skills. You know, you cannot be a programmer, you cannot call yourself a programmer if you just do not code, if you just learn and learn and learn, but you do not do anything with your hands, you cannot call yourself a programmer. 
You understand? So whatever you have learned from this class, I'm begging you guys. I'm begging you guys in the name of Jesus and any other God that you worship. Please practice, practice, practice. Practice and practice and practice. And also, for those of us who have not reached out to our mentors, please, you are in the wrong. Please, you are in the wrong. If you have not reached out to your mentor by Monday, anyone that has not reached out to their mentor by Monday is going to start receiving strikes from me. And I'm being serious about it. I'm being very, very, very serious about it. So please, let all of us reach out to our mentor and we hope for the best. So see you guys tomorrow. It's PM tomorrow evening too again. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. And well, we are not our normal number here because normally we are above 100. So, but please, for those that did not join, please, for those that joined, I mean, thank you for joining. I greatly appreciate it. And please, if you can talk to your friends or your partners that do not join, that did not join, you can ask them why they did not join and you can just ensure that they attend the classes. Attending classes is, is way different from just watching the videos on YouTube. Attending classes feels more immersive and you actually learn better than just watching videos by yourself. If we wanted to do a scenario whereby you can just watch videos by yourself, we would have just shared links to you guys and you could just go and read and come and ask those questions later. But we are critically providing facilitators to handle each class and each session for you guys. So please, like I always say, the opportunity that has been presented to you, always make good use of it. It's for your own good. It's for your own good. All right. See you guys tomorrow by 8 p.m. Looking forward to hearing from you. Bye. Yeah, bye, guys.